Hello, my fellow parasites. Parasites, apologize! No. Anyway, welcome to season four of the Venom Vlog. This season we'll be covering Venom 2 movie news, more classic Venom and Carnage stories, the Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated series, and all comics involving Eugene Flash Thompson. So sit back and enjoy another exciting episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today I just have a quick piece of news here regarding Maximum Venom. So, uh, as some of you may know, that there is going to be no episode of Maximum Venom this month. As far as I know, I haven't seen any listings for it, I haven't seen anything going up on Marvel HQ to promote it or anything like that. And I think the reason is because that weekend that it would have aired on that Sunday, um, which is like the 20-something, you know, around then, I think that's Comic-Con weekend. So maybe they just intentionally just didn't want it to air at Comic-Con. Maybe they want to drop some news at Comic-Con about it. I have no idea. We should find out Comic-Con news very soon. I think Thursday, uh, July 9th, we're going to get some Comic-Con news. Uh, so, yeah, so we'll have news, you know, very, very soon. Um, I pro you know, tomorrow, actually. Uh, but uh, today, I want to talk about this, which is kind of the, the wrap-up of Maximum Venom. You know, uh, I know I've seen a lot of uh, people's comments about the show so far, and I love them. You know, whether you agree with me, disagree with me, um, you know, vehemently disagree with me or vehemently agree with me, that's fine. But I have seen some people, uh, at least one in particular, people who will take my opinion of something and go use it to like as like I don't know a weapon of some kind to someone else I saw two people discussing what their favorite Spider-Man cartoon was and because I made a comment about my opinion on you know just my observation and it could you know my opinion could be wrong my observation could be wrong but I say things like you know in the comments I said something like uh, oh you know I think because people that was the show they watched when they were kids that's like their you know spectacular Spider-Man is their favorite show because that was like their introduction to Spider-Man so because of that maybe they're resistant to other versions of the character again that's just my opinion that could be true in some cases that could be true and not true in a lot of other cases uh, but I saw someone kind of take my words and put them at someone uh, and show them to somebody and say, yep, you're a classic toxic, you know, um, fan, uh, spectacular Spider-Man fan. And it's like, don't use my words for that. That is ridiculous. And that's not how we should behave. If someone out there has a, di a different opinion of you, especially on a Spider-Man cartoon, why are you getting so mad? Why call somebody toxic just because they, whether they have a good reason or you think they have a good reason of you know their favorite show or not um let's you know, so say someone comes to you and go well spider spectacular spider-man is my favorite and someone else goes well the mtv spider-man is my favorite there's no reason those two people should be calling each other toxic and screaming at each other it's so ridiculous like you some of you younger people I've been there, trust me. So that's why I know most of you are younger. Yes, there are some older people that do this too, but for the most part, it's a lot of younger people. Don't act like that. You're both Spider-Man fans. At the end of the day, that's what matters. You know, these characters stick around because they've been constantly rebooted and re and changed for new generations. Uh, like we talked about, I had Kevin Burke, who we're going to talk about here in a second. Uh, Kevin Burke and Doc Wyatt, the creators of the current Spider-Man show uh, that we're watching with Maximum Venom in it. They say, you know, back when Amazing you know, Spider-Man is Amazing Friends came out, Peter Parker dressed like in a suit and that's kind of, you know, was indicative of the times, you know, like, you know, 16 to 18 year old kids would try to dress nice like that when they're trying to go to a job or go to places, you know, things like that. And yeah, sure, still some kids wear suits sometimes, you know, if they have the money to, to afford one and stuff. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I owned a suit for a while. It took me a while to, before I bought a suit. Um, but I think that's mostly because I just don't like suits. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, anyway, so it, it's a reflective of the time, right? And then so now this is just a new version of Spider-Man. And hey, if you don't like it, if you're not a fan of it, you know, that's fine. But to, to you, you know, use other people's opinions, it's just like, oh, that person made a good point. Let's take their words and use it as, you know, my attack, uh, you know, towards this other person. That's not cool. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't use other people's words. Use your own words. Find your own way to say something and, and be respectful. I mean, we're all Spider-Man fans. At the end of the day, because you love one version and I love another version, that's how Spider-Man sticks around for 60 plus years more. Um, and that's just, that's how it is. That's how these things work. Uh, and, you know, and that's how he'll keep living on uh, long past all of us, you know, so yeah, so just, you know, please don't do that. Just respectfully, just, you know, I, I, I understand people want to get into debates and stuff, and that's fine. Keep it friendly. But to sling names at people and stuff and, and to use my words when my words weren't, uh, you know, uh, to attack anyone. My words were just my opinion, and I very calmly stated my opinion, and it wasn't to put anyone down out there. So don't use my words to put anyone down. Don't use anyone else's words to put someone down. And try not to use your own words to put someone down, especially if there's someone who is a fan of the same thing you are. You're both Spider-Man fans. You should find ways to, you know, 
coexist and lift each other up because that's what Spider-Man would do, right? Uh, so anyway, so today we got some news uh, from Kevin Burke, who is one of the people I just talked about a minute ago, one of the co-creators of the show, the new Spider-Man show with Maximum Venom, uh, along with Doc Wyatt, and a, a list of talented other people that bring the show to life. And he posted today that they are working on the finale. I'll put that picture up here. Um, and they are working on the finale of Spider-Man Maximum Venom. He put hashtag single tier, uh, hashtag wait until you see this. And, I, you know, I'm excited because I know this guy is a fan. I mean, after talking to him and Doc, they are fans of Spider-Man, and they have to approach things differently, though, than just a fan. You know, when you work in these fields and you work in the entertainment industry, it's it's hard when you're a fan and you have to and you have to be like, you know, they're creative guys. So it's not like they're business guys. They can still bring in their fandom into their job to an extent. But they also like you heard them say in my interview with them. They don't want to just repeat what came before. They're trying new things. And sometimes, you know, those new things you have to... And that's the other thing people forget. When you're working on a show like this, you get notes from everyone. You get notes from Marvel. You get notes from Disney. You get, you know, um, notes from toy making companies, you know, brands, you know, who are trying to, you know, design versions of the character for, the, you know, for T-shirts and, and lunch boxes and stuff. And there's a lot that goes into this. So, so, you know, when I see people just get really upset over things, it's like, hey, look, Sometimes when you're making shows, you get obstacles and you got to work with those obstacles to still produce the best thing you can produce, you know, and it's like, just understand that this is hard work. And, uh, and so that's what I like is that this is hard work, but these guys still love doing it. And they're sad. Like Kevin is like, yeah, this sucks. Like I've been working on this show. You know, they said in the interview, they worked on this show two years ago is when they started writing the show for Maximum Venom. And it's taken this long for it to air. And we're not even done yet. We still have three more episodes to go. So, uh, so they're, you know, so just imagine being on a journey with Spider-Man for that long and then also then when they finish the you know writing they have to go and do other things and then they're probably working on other shows and then you heard them in the interview with me they're already working on shows that will come out two years from now and so think about that think about how your life is when you are working on some when you're talking about things now that you did two years ago but you can't say anything about the things you're going to do two years from now imagine you know that's that's a lot to juggle and that's a lot of pressure and that's why these you know tv shows and stuff have collaborations it's why it's not all just on kevin burke to do this or doc wyatt to do this that's why they hire a great crew a great team and they do their best and yes it's not going to be for everyone but keep in mind this is someone's first interpretation of spider-man uh, and you don't get to pick your first interpretation and chances are your first interpretation you do fall in love with my first interpretation of spider-man was spider-man is amazing friends which trust me if some of you guys went out there if you haven't seen that show and you watched it you'd be like what is this and it's like hey man that's all we had back then nowadays you guys get to fight over which spider-man's the best because there's like five or six different spider-mans between cartoons and movies and animation and live action you're so spoiled <laughs> you really are and you f and you use that spoiledness to fight like brats and i'm kind of like ah oh. like no embrace it embrace it just say hey you like that version cool i like this version let's talk about it you know and uh, and i see a lot more of that happening now where there's like that you know back and forth where people are being respectful to each other and even in this argument i saw earlier i saw one of the kids not the one who used my words to attack the other kid but the the kid who was being attacked he was actually really respectful he goes you know what, dude, I respect your opinion. Thanks for sharing it. And that was just his way of ending the conversation. And I'm like, that's, that's a good person right there. That's a very Peter Parker thing to do. So uh, kudos to that guy. Um, but uh, yeah, just seeing this, I was like, yeah, it's fun to talk about, you know, uh, the, you know, the, the just, I wanted to talk about that kind of stuff, like, you know, using words and being, uh, and being, you know, really toxic. And when you call someone toxic, it, it's such an oxymoron. Cause like, but you're the one being toxic, <laughs> you know, by saying it typically. I mean, sometimes, yes, you're calling someone out for their what they're saying, but this person didn't say anything worthy, I thought, of being called toxic. And I didn't think my words, because for all I know, they're going to read it and go, oh, well, screw that guy. What does he know? And they'll hate me. And it's like, hey, I didn't say those words to you. That's just my opinion about something. Like, it, it, you know, it shouldn't bother you that much. But when they're used as a weapon... It could, you know, it, it hurts. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah, like, don't, you know, don't do that. Don't use my words to hurt people. That's not why I say things. I'm not out here to sling, uh, sh you know, shade or, or hate at anyone. Yeah, there are some times where I call out um, other media outlets who don't report on something properly, but that's just me trying to make sure that the true information gets out there so fans aren't fighting over nothing, you know, because if you hear from one site that they said this and then I say something different, people are going to fight over that. And it's like, well, we shouldn't be fighting because 
you know, maybe what I said is untrue. Let me do more research. And I'll look at research and I'm like, nope, I, what I said was right. What they said was wrong. So then we go, hey, you guys got to change your article. And that's happened in the past. We've had MovieWeb and other places change their articles because they, you know, I asked them like, hey, that's not accurate information. And so it, that's what we're all here to do. Them and me, you know, we're all just trying to make sure that you guys get the best information you can. And uh, from us, you know, and that's kind of our role is to try to bring you the best information. And then also just to talk about things, not to, you know, stir the pot and not to get people angry at each other just because they like different versions of Spider-Man. So for me, you know, I'm, I, I'm intrigued by this version. I don't hate it. And I, I think a lot of people out there probably set me up for that because I saw so much negativity at one time uh, on Twitter and a little bit in my comics. Most, mostly in my comments, you guys are really respectful, which is awesome. Um, and I, I want you to be honest with me. If you really don't like the show, that's fine. You can you voice that in the in the comments, and I'm I'm not against you voicing your opinion, but just use your words carefully. Be constructive if you're going to be negative. Don't just go, oh, it's crap and it's crap. You know, it's like that's not constructive, and that's not uh, that's not the kind of environment I really want to foster here. You know, I kind of like us to have a discourse about things and uh, and share opinions on stuff and be critical and and, and help expand critical minds um, and and just you know awaken that because a lot of us don't. Sometimes we just blindly love stuff. And that's not good either, you know. So we got so there's 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 extremes, right? Too negative, too positive, and we just got to be critical, you know. And I think that's what uh, the key to embracing new ideas is. So I've kind of embraced this because a lot of people told me it wasn't good, and then when I watched it, I was like, wow, it's totally not as bad as everybody makes it out to be. And I kind of in, endeared by this show a little bit, and I kind of like I like seeing Miles there, I like seeing Spider Gwen there. These are newer characters that I've kind of, as an older guy, have kind of got interested in because I'm like, yeah, these are cool. These, it's it's neat to see. Um, these new characters and these new versions of like Gwen Stacy, one of my favorite characters of all time. But to be honest with you, she was a little boring back in the day. Like not completely, like I still see why Peter was in love with her and stuff. And so she had her moments for sure, but some writers didn't really handle her too, too well. And I think that's why they killed her. And I've always hated that they killed her. So it's cool to see a version of her that has spider powers where in her world, Peter Parker died and, she, and he was the lizard and she, you know, feels responsible for it. He, he was like her uncle Ben moment. And now she wants to go out there and do the right thing, you know, and use her powers to help people. And that's cool, man. Like, look how long it took them to develop that idea. And uh, and I'm so glad I'm around for it because I'm a big Gwen Stacy fan. So, yeah, and then Miles, he, I, I liked him at first, but then the comics started to lose me. But then the movie did a great job at it. And then now this, you know, this show, I think, does a good job of Miles, too. And um, I do got to go back and watch Ultimate Spider-Man, so I will do that for you guys, uh, you know, probably later on, maybe towards the end of the season, um, I'll go back and I'll, I'll review all five seasons, I think it was, of that show too. So yeah, we'll have more cartoon content coming up on here. But uh, for now, I'm just wanted to bring this news. This is a long video for just a small amount of news, but I wanted to squeeze in other topics and other things too that I want, you know, that wanted to bring up to you guys. But uh, Maximum Venom, they're working on the finale now. Uh, I don't know when the next episode will air, the fourth episode, so keep an eye out and I'll try to talk about it when I find out. And then, you know, hopefully they'll go back on a monthly schedule, episode four, five, and then six that'll probably bring us up towards the end of the year and so yeah man that's it that's it for now so uh, what do you think of this they're working on the finale that's that's what i mean they wrote this two years ago and they're still not done with the final episode that's just amazing to me it, that's a that's a lot of hard work uh, across a bunch of groups of people that have different departments and different things that they add to the show and uh, kudos to them for nearing the finish line but of course that doesn't mean their work is done these guys are now going off onto other projects which i can't wait to see what those are and hopefully they announce those very soon too so let me know your thoughts down below about everything i said today and uh, and we'll have our conversation as always down there thanks for watching the show like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace